There is one more thing interesting that I'd like to show you right now that we can deploy right away because we've got all of this stuff deployed. So you probably notice that every time we try to connect, we have to provide the credentials of the user, which actually connect you to the server. But what if we would like to bypass this? We would like to do something to not provide this credentials every time we are connected. That's possible, and we, of course, can use a certificate instead of credentials. For that reason, we have to request a new certificate. So let's go to our website. Oh, and of course, we have to provide a cert services. And this time, we're going to issue a certificate for the particular user. And here we have to provide the credentials of this user. We're going to create the certificate for. In my case, it's an administrator user because there is only one user right now. But if you got on the other user, you should provide the credentials of this user here. And we're going to request a normal user certificate. There are no further information required, so we can submit. And we are ready to install the certificate for this user. All right. As you already know, it will install in a user container for certificates. You can close that one and open the console. And as you can see, the administrator certificate is over here in a current user certificate. And that's fine because we don't want to use it in a computer wide environment, but also only for the user which will be actually logged in. So it should stay over here. As we have already got a certificate, we can go to the properties of the connection right now. We don't have to save this console. We are opening the network and sharing center, going to adapt to settings and a VPN connection settings. There are some things we have to change over here in the security because that part of authentication is about the user and connection. So we should change this from the EAPMS CHAP and V2 encryption to something others, for example, smart card or other certificate. And unfortunately, it's not the last thing we have to do because we've also had to configure that stuff. So we're going to the properties. And what we've got here, we know that we are not using a smart card right now, but we could. We're using a certificate that's located on this computer. We're going to verify a server's identity by validating the server certificate, but only for our CA. Okay? We won't connect to the other servers. And now it will try to find and pick the certificate for the user during the connection. Okay? So we are going to push OK. OK. And hopefully it should work out of the box right now. So let's connect. It's verifying the credentials. It's as you probably noticed, it's it hasn't asked us for uh, credentials of a user, but he tried to use something to find the computer. If everything will go okay, of course. Oh, it's taking too long. But yes, it's finally connected. So it has used the certificate of the user. And after the credential was sent to the server, it used a certificate to establish the tunnel. So let's check what user has to connect and the details of the connection. It's the AP connection with IPsec, with no compression, and on the other side, the site of the remote access server, if we will log in, 
And if we will go to routing and remote access, snap in, routing and remote access, we can check the remote access clients that are connected to our server. As you can see, the administrator is connected. So it used a certificate of the administrator without asking us for our credentials. That's how to deploy the certificates. There is a lot of stuff that we can actually do next. For example, if we will disconnect it, this tunnel, we can also use a IKV2 certificate, an IKV2 protocol for the connection, which is quite funny thing because it supports something which is called a mobile key, mobility. And it's a feature that I'd like to demonstrate right now after we will connect because we've already deployed the certificates and it can use the same certificates as, for example, L2TP IPsec. We have to just change the 4 key v 2 okay, here, and we should be able to connect. So it should be fast. Yes, we are connected with IKV2. And if we go into the status and details, there is something which is called mobile key support. What's what is exactly mobile key? Well, it's a some sort of protocol that can hold the connection even if we change the network adapters. So look at this. We've got both adapters on the client enabled on the local network and the outside network. So let's disable the first one and check if it's running to the gateway area01.test.local it's pinging so let's tell him to ping all the time all right and turn this off that's some um, strange thing the ping is dead but the connection is still up and running so the VPN connection it's not broken yet it will be after some time that we can configure on the server side. But it's still up. And when we try to enable, so for example, we will change the link from our home provider to the GPRS mobile network, and we will enable the, this. He will connect, he will stay connected to the network. And regain our pain. So normally it should disconnect if it would be any other protocol, but with a mobile key, it support network changing and interruptions in the network. That's a really handy, really handy feature, which also works on the certificates. But the most important is that mobile key didn't break the connection. So it won't ask a user for credentials again. He will not try to connect again. He is connected all the time, virtually. On the other hand, on the other side, on the remote access server, we can configure several things about the mobile key and IKV2 protocol. So when we go to the remote act, routing and remote access, and we go to the properties of this and IKV2, there are some things that are associated with this. For example, network outage time. So how long the VPN connection stay up without any connections, really. That's a funny thing. Very, very useful. The last protocol I would like to talk about in a VPN topic, it's a SSTP protocol. Well, it's even less complicated than the other protocols because it has to be deployed only on remote access server. On the client machine, there has to be a CA certificate to authorize and to check the validity of the certificate that the remote access server will show to our client. 
So we have to configure all of this stuff on the side of a remote access server again. So we are going to that routing and remote access. We are going to the properties here and a security tab. And down there, we've got a, our SSL certificate binding. So here we have to select and provide the SSL certificate for our SSTP listener. Well, as you can see, we can use our certificate of the machine because it meets requirements of the SSL certificate. But there is one more thing I have to tell you before we will proceed. Well, if you on the same machine, on remote access server machine, if you've got already IIS server configured and this certificate is bind to the port 443, it won't be able to use it because this certificate can be bind only to one service, one web listener. Because this server is only remote access server, we can use it here. So we can just apply this and restart the service. And after it will reboot, all of this stuff will be configured on that side. So now we have to take a look about the others. We are going to VPN connection properties and we pick secure socket tunneling protocol. As you probably noticed, we're still using a user certificate to not be asking about the credentials. So we are going pushing OK and trying to connect. Revocation function was able to check revocation. That's the problem because in a certificate, an idea of public key infrastructure, there is something like CRL lists, certificate revocation list. And on that list, the server pushing certificates that are revoked. In a production environment, you of course should prepare your CA to get an answer for such a request of a CRL from the clients. But because there's only demo, so we can bypass this. And we can achieve that by going, oh, I'm sorry, by going and running bring out registry editor. And we're going to a local machine, system and current control set, services, and we are looking SSTP service. SSTP service, SSTP, where is it? Here it is. We are going to the parameters, and here we have to provide a new value, which will be called no cert revocation check no cert revocation check so if we will enable it the client will not try to check the revocation list during the initial connection so probably it should connect now okay we are connected so let's check the computer and adapter settings. And on the details, we got a SSTP protocol with EEP authentication. As I told you before, it required only a certificate on the side of the server. And to prove this, we're going to go to the console. That, that one will be needed for user authentication, but on the local computer, we can delay the client one dot test dot local certificate through the machine certificate. And now it should still be able to connect. And here it is, it is connected. So that's how we configuring uh, VPN connections with a certificate 
And that's all. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you.